Hello, and welcome to the Reselling Report podcast for today, Monday, July 13th, 2020. I'm your host, Ann Eckhart, and every weekday I upload the Reselling Report to update you on the day's retail and e-commerce news, including the latest from eBay, Amazon, Etsy, and Poshmark. Whether you are listening on YouTube or your favorite podcast site, make sure you're subscribed. And now let's get on with today's show. Well, I hope everyone had a good weekend. It is Monday, start of a new week. (laughs) Whether you were out sourcing or photographing or listing or maybe all three, I hope you are growing your reselling business. There's a lot of news to get to today, so let's just jump right into it. First of all, a new reselling show is coming to television. Extreme Unboxing premieres on A&E on August 4th. According to the show's site, A&E's Extreme Unboxing follows a group of larger-than-life personalities from across the country as they buy liquidated merchandise for pennies on the dollar and unbox it with hopes for big profits, risking their own money to bid on and win the best boxes at the best prices Pallets are delivered to their homes for the big reveal. Each group digs through hundreds, sometimes thousands of items on the hunt for retail gold. Whether it is one box or an entire truckload, these savvy super flippers scour the internet searching for their next big money score. With items ranging from everyday store stock to the weird and wacky, this modern day treasure hunt is filled with surprises as no one, including the buyers themselves, have any idea what will be inside. And a couple of familiar YouTube channels that I see, uh, we have Steve and Steph who are resale killers, and then Pastor Paul and Heather from Hooked on Picking, and it looks like there's four other um payers who are going to be featured as well. So this will be interesting for those of you who buy liquidation. Um, now, of course, this is, sounds like it's going to be kind of like extreme couponing where they're not just going to order one little case. They're going to order as much as they can. But it will be interesting to see how this might affect reselling. And if you do buy in bulk uh, liquidation, is this going to create Um, more competition as people get the heads up. They always said that extreme couponing, a lot of people felt extreme couponing kind of ruined couponing because it alerted the stores and they changed policies and then everyone was trying to do it. I don't know if this will have the same effect, but anytime uh, there's a heads up on especially how to make money, uh, I can see it creating some competition. Now, I don't do pallet um, ordering, but if you do, Extreme unboxing might have an effect on your business, but we'll keep an eye on this. And again, it does premiere August 4th on A&E. So set your DVRs for that. Jumping into the reselling sites themselves, we're going to start with eBay today. A note from eBay Australia. So if you are an Australian eBay seller, there's a new post over on the announcements board on your site uh, that says we're retiring the eBay premium service badge. As you know, we've been investing in the eBay Plus program to recognize and reward sellers that offer great delivery options and top level service that buyers can trust. The eBay Plus badge will soon become the primary seller badge on eBay dot com australia the ebay premium service badge will be phased out starting in july 2020 it has already been removed from search pages and will be removed from listing pages later this year it says by consolidating our badging on site we're giving buyers a more consistent and compelling shopping experience it also creates a simpler selling experience as there's only one set of criteria for you to meet in order to be recognized and rewarded for great service if your listing qualifies for ebay premium service you're already offering free domestic postage, zero to one day handling, 30 plus day returns, and an express postage option. And if you want to qualify for the eBay Plus badge, you need to offer a reasonably priced express postage option and upload valid tracking for your eBay Plus order. So again, that is for eBay Australia. Um, That's just interesting for me to read, obviously, here in America. I don't know what this eBay Plus program is. We don't have that here uh, in the States. We have top rated seller, which I'm assuming is the equivalent. But anyway, heads up for those of you who sell in Australia. Also on eBay, there's a new post over on the e-commerce bites blog that says eBay payments, the end of PayPal mad money. A letter from a reader yesterday raised some interesting points about eBay managed payments and its impact on buyers. It gets back to conventional wisdom that buyers are sellers and sellers are buyers. For example, collectors and fashionistas often sell items in order to fund their buying habits or trade up. 
Selling on sites like eBay mean they have their PayPal pin money or mad money they can spend on non-essential items without feeling guilty about the expense. And of course, that's something that happens on Poshmark a lot, right? You sell on Poshmark, your money's in your account, but then you can use it to shop on Poshmark. So um, what they're saying here is for eBay, PayPal kind of works the same way. You sell, your money's in your PayPal account, but then you buy. Um, The article goes on to say, They may also feel freer to spend money in accounts that have never been viewed by members of their household. This reader said that as a very small seller, I use PayPal only and would very much like to keep it as I only use it for eBay payments and things I want to buy using that money, like the items I do sell. Seller buyers can still use PayPal to make purchases even after they've made the switch to manage payments. However, their PayPal accounts won't automatically be funded eBay will only disperse funds into a bank account as stated on the eBay Managed Payments help page. And that section reads, does managed payments support direct deposit accounts? No. Seller enabled for managed payments can only link to a checking account to receive their payouts. Direct deposit accounts are not compatible with managed payments at this time. Please ensure to provide only a checking account where the name, address, and business information, if applicable, on the bank account matches the name and information provided to eBay. This means that sellers and buyers would have to manually move the eBay disbursement from their checking account to their PayPal account, which removes the spontaneity of buying with their special PayPal funds. That feeling of having mad money to spend might be lessened, making buyers think twice before splurging on purchases on eBay or elsewhere. It may also make the flow of money more obvious to family members. I see in discussions that eBay seems to be demanding you link to a bank account, an e-commerce bytes reader said. Not really interested as the only bank account I have is shared. We prefer to keep my, quote, money separate. There is a flip side, of course. Managed payments may make buyers more likely to purchase on the site, in part because they have more funny options. From the eBay help page, it reads, what payment methods are are supported? Supported. What payment methods are supported? Goodness. It's Monday. When eBay manages payments, and managed payment supports credit, debit, and gift cards, Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal, and PayPal credit. Buyers may also feel safer giving their financial information to eBay rather than an unknown third-party seller. And this really goes back to, for those of us who've been on eBay for a long time, if you remember, and I know this is how it was when I started, we used to stomp our feet that there was PayPal, right? We just wanted people to be able to pay. Why did they have to go through PayPal? It was a struggle to get buyers to use PayPal so they could shop on eBay. Now, of course, this is 25 years later. Most people have who shop online likely have a PayPal account because they're doing other things online as well, as long as e- uh, along with eBay. So PayPal is a pretty normal uh, currency. It's really just as normal as your Visa or MasterCard credit card, I think. So um, yeah, it just goes back to uh, how in the beginning we fought PayPal and now we're all fighting because we don't want to get rid of PayPal. But you can let me know what you think. Does not having money in your PayPal account that you earned on eBay uh, prevent you from maybe going to spend that or if you do at all? Now, I don't. I withdraw my PayPal money into my business account and track it that way. But if you're a part-time or just a hobby seller, that might be something that you do. So we'll have to see what this looks like um, as we go forward and everyone um, is in managed payments. Eventually, probably by the end of the year, maybe. We'll see. We still haven't gotten, I still am not in managed payments here in July. Um, eBay, I'm in, I'm registered, but Still not in. Maybe this will be the week. Amazon continues its effort to take over their shipping and to not have to use third-party carriers such as UPS or FedEx. According to a new article on Reuters.com, Amazon begins rolling out bigger UPS and FedEx-style delivery trucks. Amazon.com is launching a new fleet of bigger, boxier trucks like those favored by rival package characters UPS and FedEx as it fights to fix widespread pandemic-fueled delivery delays that sent customers into the arms of competitors like Walmart. The world's largest online retail ordered more than 2,200 heavy-duty utility master, I think, walk-in delivery trucks from Shift Group, a Michigan-based specialty vehicle company, an Amazon spokesman told Reuters. The company declined to say how many of the vehicles have been sent to Amazon delivery contractors or where they would be deployed. Amazon is under pressure to make good one- and two-day deliveries promised to customers who subscribe to its $119 annual Prime service. Orders for food, computers, toys, and exercise equipment surge after states issued stay-at-home orders to battle the pandemic, overwhelming Amazon's network and adding days and even weeks to delivery time. 
Ant drivers assigned to the new truck showed Reuters training materials from Wisconsin-based safety and compliance consultory J.J. Keller & Associates, which confirmed that Amazon is a client, but the shift group did not respond to requests for comments. One of the new Amazon trucks was seen recently operating in Chicago, according to a Reuters reporter. Training is underway in the Los Angeles area, drivers said. While Amazon purchased the vehicles last year, the branded trucks have been parked for months in locations around the United States, including in Amazon lots in New Jersey and California's dairy country. The company declined to state why it waited so long to roll out the new fleet. Drivers familiar with the new vehicles say they can carry more and bigger packages than the Mercedes-Benz, Fiat, Chrysler, and Ford Motor Company vans Amazon contractors dispatch around the country. Two drivers, who declined to be named for fear of retaliation, opted not to switch to the new vehicles because they are heavier and more difficult to maneuver than the Amazon vans. So I've never seen an Amazon delivery truck in my area. Now in Iowa, I'm assuming these are going to be obviously parked near Amazon warehouses uh, directly to uh, deliver to the areas closest to them. But yeah, you'll have to let me see if you've ever seen an Amazon delivery truck or if you've seen one of these new big old box trucks. Um, sounds like Amazon wants these trucks to be as prevalent as UPS and FedEx and knowing Amazon one um, someday even more prevalent. Turning now to Etsy, how does some free Etsy shipping tape sound? Well, according to a post on the Etsy community forum, some people are getting offers for free shipping tape. This thread starts, I was happy to receive an email from Etsy this morning. It offered three free rolls of shipping tape printed with Etsy logos. I'm glad to see another way of putting the Etsy name out there. Of course, I had to give my email address and phone number when accepting the offer. If you didn't get the offer, check your email. There's a limited supply. This is a pretty active thread because people are saying they can't find the message. They didn't get it. Other people said, okay, if I looked around more... I found it, so you can let me know if you got this offer as well. And then there's the discussion of some people not wanting to use Etsy branded anything because they want people to uh, build brand recognition from whatever their store name is. And I think this is probably more people who might sell on multiple sites, including maybe their own website. But other customers are saying, hey, anything that promotes the Etsy brand is great. And I tend to agree. Now, those of us who sell on eBay and have eBay stores know that there is eBay branded tape that we can get with our quarterly store supply coupons. And I think most of us have the tape. What one of the sellers on the thread points out is they like to use tape to that the Etsy tape will be helpful because it will cover up writing on boxes they repurpose. And that's exactly what we do here. Uh, reuse a lot of boxes. Any box I can reuse for eBay, I will, um, but it has printing on it. So we'll use the eBay tape to cover that up. But you can let me know if you got the offer for the free Etsy tape. And also in Etsy news, people are selling breathable masks that don't protect against COVID-19 on Etsy. Now, this is an article that's appearing on a number of sites. I'm just reading from insider.com. Uh, it says, breathable masks made from mesh and other porous materials are being sold on websites like Etsy. Many of the designs were created as anti-masks or face coverings that technically comply with public health guidelines despite not actually protecting the wearer or those around them from COVID-19. Other designs say they were created for events like raves, but appear to have been purchased by those who do not agree with max mandates that are now common throughout the U.S. In a statement sent to Insider, a representative for Etsy said mask listings are not allowed to include medical or health claims and that the company is working to actively review and remove items that violate its policies. So it kind of sounds to me like, I don't know that Etsy would pull these items. Uh, They're looking for people who are making claims such as, you know, this complies with local ordinances or wear this if your area needs to wear a mask, such as that. Um, Whereas the mesh ones, like they said, are kind of designed for raves or, or whatnot. But I think during this time when masks are selling like crazy, there is the um, opportunity for somebody to buy this mask, either trying to circumvent ordinances or because they really think they will work and they're going to be more breathable. So just a heads up um, to make sure that what you are buying and selling uh, on Etsy complies because not sure if they will end up cracking down on these mesh masks and pulling them. They very well could. They've pulled a lot of things over the past months um, in order to make sure that misinformation wasn't getting out and that people weren't taking advantage of the climate where people want masks. 
and hand sanitizer. In Poshmark news, there are a couple of new inspirational quotes over on Poshmark's Facebook page that you can screenshot and share or just be inspired by from reading. The first is don't limit your challenges, challenge your limits. And the second, with the new day comes new strength and new thoughts. Well, I feel inspired already. Poshmark also has a new episode of their AM to PM series over on YouTube. It says, we're so excited to follow the day in the life of full-time reseller and posh dad, John, in our latest episode of AM to PM. Get a glimpse into how he's made the transition to becoming a full-time posher and his at-home life with his two adorable kids and wife. So it's about an eight-minute day in the life video of a posh dad that you can watch. So that'll be interesting. And another Poshmark Related news, a UCO administrator suspected of selling team apparel online. This is on the Oklahoman.com website. It says the University of Central Oklahoma Athletic Department administrator is suspected of illegally selling team apparel online, according to court affidavit dry- filed this week in Oklahoma County District Court. Assistant Athletic Director Brittany Michelle Brannon, who purchases apparel for the athletic department staff, allegedly sold it on Poshmark, a social commerce marketplace where people can buy and sell new or used clothing, shoes, and accessories. Last month, Interim Athletic Director Chuck Bailey contacted a campus police investigator after the wife of another athletic department administrator said she had found a Poshmark site run by Brannon that may have some property belonging to UCO Athletics for sale. The administrator emailed screenshots to Bailey, who asked his wife to look up the site because she has a Poshmark account. They found several items that appeared to be the same as items purchased by UCO Athletics for UCO Athletics staff, reported the investigator, who requested in a search warrant all electronic records and evidence related to Brannon's Poshmark account. The officer wrote, there's possible cause to believe she is involved in illegal activities such as embezzlement and violation of the Oklahoma Computer Crimes act so yeah don't steal from work and sell it online (laughs) this is the second time in a couple weeks that they have been able to track criminal activity back to poshmark the first was uh, someone who had set a fire during the uh, rioting uh, during the protesting that was going on heavily uh, here in america and they tracked her down Based on Etsy and Poshmark activity, they were able to find her. And now someone who works for a college athletic department selling the stuff that she was in charge of ordering for the company. So yeah, embezzlement charges look like they're on the way. And hopefully her Poshmark closet has been shut down or maybe it's just empty. Let's go see if we can find um, Brittany Michelle Brannon's Poshmark closet. Kudos to whoever can find it first. And finally today, the general retail climate continues to look bleak. According to an article on CNBC.com, pandemic deals mightier blow to retail than the Great Recession. First quarter operating income down 58%. This article reads, even when the Great Recession dampened consumer confidence and drove up unemployment, things weren't as bad for retailers as they, as they have been during the cu- Current COVID-19 crisis, according to new analysis from Retail Metrics. Days after the World Health Organization declared a pandemic in March, retailers across the U.S. were forced to shut their doors for many weeks to help stem the spread of the virus. The result, the retail sector's first quarter operating income fell 57.7% compared with last year and 71.1% when not including Walmart, which was allowed to keep operating to sell essential items like food. This marks the worst retail earnings performance since the group began tracking retail earnings in the late 1990s. According to Retail Metrics, the previous low for retail earnings came during the Great Recession, when earnings landed down 26.6% year-over-year in the fourth quarter of 2008. The largest quarterly decline that followed the dot-com bubble was a drop of 11.7% in the fourth quarter of 2000. While earnings gaps have been widening in previous years between mall and non-mall retail earnings, The difference grew significantly this quarter as mall-based retailers had to close in many places due to the pandemic. First quarter earnings for mall chains plummeted 626%, but off-mall companies only saw a 26% income drop. Given the mandated store closures and revenue drops, many businesses took cost-saving measures, including furloughing workers, permanent store closing, and expanded curbside pickup. But these cost-saving measures aren't going to be enough for some retailers. Prior to the pandemic, many companies were struggling to stay afloat and adopt to new consumer habits, but the current crisis has accelerated the pressure on the industry. 
Resale Metrics listed all the companies that have filed for bankruptcy or warned of the possibility since the bankruptcy began. This is a big list. We've got Modal Sporting Goods, True Religion, Roots USA, J. Crew, Gold's Gym, Neiman Marcus, Lord & Taylor, Stage Stores, JCPenney, Tuesday Morning, RTW Retail Wins, GNC, Chuck E. Cheese, Lucky Brands, Brooks Brothers, and Sur La Table. I believe, um, reported as likely to file for bankruptcy, the Asina Retail Group, Francesca's, Taylor Brands, and retailers issuing growing concerns are J. Jill, Steinmart, Francesca's, RTW Retail Wins, and CBL and Associates. So mall stores not doing well. Now the big box retailers and off uh, price retailers are seeing the growth, but the traditional retail as we know it is really in trouble. And like we've been talking about on the show, that does affect uh, those of us who are resellers because what we find secondhand in our areas at thrift stores and garage sales typically comes from the retail stores uh, that local people shop from, right? People go to the mall, they buy the clothes, they wear them, then they donate them to the thrift store, and then we get them. Well, if there aren't stores to shop from, what's going to end up at the thrift store? So, Yeah, it'll be uh, sad and interesting to watch as all of this continues. And it just drives home the point, I think, that if you can source now, source now. Because um, while the thrift stores are loaded, it's going to start drying up as there's just less retail for people to shop locally. And they start shopping more online. And typically, I think, when you shop online, you tend to make maybe more curated selections, I feel. You know, we all go to the mall and you're hitting the clearance rack and you just buy a bunch of stuff, drag it home. But when you're online, it kind of sits in your shopping cart. You look at it. Maybe you're a little more selective. So yeah, not good uh, for the malls or the mall stores. And that is a wrap on today's show. If you listened on YouTube, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Remember that you can also listen to the podcast via Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and more. Check out the show notes below for links to the articles I referenced. And if you want to learn how to make money on eBay and YouTube the way I do, check out my books over on Amazon. My Amazon store is linked below. Thanks so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.